Welcome to this presentation from Pawpaw TV. We present an original lecture from Dr. Jerry McLaughlin, Professor Emeritus of Pharmacognosy at Purdue University and winner of the Tyler Prize. He is talking about his life's work. It is presented in nine parts. Since he is talking about a serious condition, we remind you that his remarks cannot be taken as medical advice, but are intended for educational purposes only. If you are viewing this from a country that does not allow this kind of teaching, please stop viewing now. And if you are sick, see a doctor. Maybe you can find one that speaks herbal medicine. A physician has three treatments, three modalities to, to try and attack cancer, if you've got cancer. Radiation and surgery have been around for a while. With, uh, with surgery, of course, it's logical. If you can cut out the tumor and you, don't, and you have entire margins around the tumor where you don't cut through any tumors, any tumor cells and you get rid of it and it's a primary tumor site and it hasn't metastasized or spread then you can get rid of it but if you cut through the tumor there's a possibility that cancer cells will break away from that site and can get into your lymph and can cause cancer a little bit later even if you do a biopsy and go into that tumor with a needle and disrupt some cells and pull them out the lymph system can pick those cells up and your lymph nodes distant from that site will develop the tumor later and so the biopsy itself can spread the cancer. So surgery certainly isn't the answer. Radiation uses ionizing rays that go through cells and scramble the DNA so that the cells can't repro reproduce themselves anymore. Okay, so radiation can work, but you can have a hard time focusing radiation exactly on just the tumor cells. Okay, they hit other cells. They certainly have to go through good cells to get to the bad cells. Okay. And so that really isn't perfect either. And of course, we know that three things cause cancer. There's physical things like radiation that causes cancer, okay? And then there are biological things like certain viruses, Epstein-Barr viruses associated with Lorcan's lymphoma. And, and then there, uh, there are chemical things, the carcinogens. We know definitely that benzoapyrene and tobacco smoke causes cancer. It binds onto the DNA and changes the DNA, changes the bases and you end up causing cancer with components of tobacco smoke. That's definitely there. But other chemicals, you know, uh, in my research work for my PhD, I worked with a compound called benzidine. And now that's been shown to be cancerous. And I'm, I'm seeing some funny reactions now on my urine samples for bladder cancer, and that causes bladder cancer. So, you know, chemicals cause cancer. So all those things cause cancer. So radiation certainly isn't an answer. Uh, and chemotherapy then is the last thing. This came to us actually after World War II as a result of chemical warfare with nitrogen mustard study. Remember in World War I they used nitrogen and sulfur mustards as war gases and they found that, uh, that nitrogen mustard will cross-link the, the DNA strands and keep them from unwinding so that you can't replicate the cells. And so this cross-linking or alkylation, it's called, with these alkylating agents that led us then to a whole series of 12,000 compounds that were all synthesized based on the structure of nitrogen mustard, okay? And there's very little innovation. They're all based on that one structure. And the whole thing was based on a toxic action in the first place. So chemotherapy started right from the beginning being toxic. And it still is. And the old adage, the oath of hypocrisies, of physician first do no harm, I don't think they take that oath anymore. Because if you do chemotherapy, you're going to do harm. Right? And this is the way the chemicals have evolved that we use for chemotherapy. Because they evolve from harmful chemicals. Cytotoxic chemicals, they kill cells. So the anti-metabolites like folic acid, methotrexate's an example there. Folic acid, as you know, is a vitamin. So methotrexate's an anti-metabolite of folic acid. So your cells take it in, think that it's folic acid, but it doesn't work. And it messes up the cells. Um, tubulin inhibitors. These are like from the vinca plant, the periwinkle plant, vincristine and vinblastine. They prevent the cells from separating their chromosomes at metaphase so that the, the cells all sit there with their chromosomes duplicated, but they can't pull them apart to make the daughter cells. And so, uh, topoisomerase is a repair enzyme, and you can go on and on with adromycin and other types of anti-cancer agents that almost all 
cause cancer. 10 to 15 percent of patients in long term on chemo develop tumors from their chemo. So anti-cancer agents, the typical ones that are used and are sold by big pharma, cause cancer. No doubt about it. Okay, and then there are the side effects of the chemo. They're not selective enough. Selectivity means that we attack usually the rapidly dividing cells of the body. And normally we have rapidly dividing cells in our hair. The roots of the hair are rapidly dividing. So you take a chemotherapy agent and your hair falls out. Spermatogenesis, you know. These anti-cancer drugs would be really good male anti-fertility agents. They decrease sperm counts. Of course, guys wouldn't feel like having sex anyhow, so it would work well. The bone marrow is continually replacing itself. And there are three types of cells in the bone marrow that are made there. The blood platelets, they're little tiny ones. They have to do with clotting the blood. So if you're on chemo, you have a pink toothbrush because your blood won't clot and your gums are bleeding. And sometimes you have to go in and have platelets transfused from other people's blood. And then you develop allergic reactions to it because you aren't, you, your, your immune system rejects those other people's platelets, just like you get the wrong type of blood cells, right? Well, okay, then we'll give you antihistamines so that you, you don't break out in hives. And we've got a whole series of drugs today that have been developed to attack the side effects of chemo. I bet tonight on Dan Rather there was somebody that was tired from chemo and they were pushing erythropoietin, which is a, a compound that builds up your blood cells, your, white, your red cells. So red cell depletion goes along with blood bone marrow depression. And so there's a, a, a big market now for these drugs to attack the side effects of chemo. Right? Is that right? And then the white cells are depleted. And the white cells are the body's policemen. These are the cells that we have these that make up our immune system, and they help to reject foreign things like infections, viruses, and stuff that come into our body, or cancers, as we develop cancers. So we go in here with chemo and poison the very mechanism that we have to reject the tumor in the first place. Does that make any sense? No. Uh uh. And then you get infections. Well, then we've got antibiotics, right? So people on chemo get antibiotics. So, we need an improvement, and we need a different type of thinking in big pharma on what type of, of drugs to develop, what type of mechanisms, what type of attack can we take to try and get at cancer, okay? And we just don't see that because the people there all base their thinking on what's already there. And the whole idea of chemotherapy has been based on toxic things. So we're developing more toxic things. The next slide. You may find some of Dr. McLaughlin's published work listed at the National Library of Medicine website, www.pubmed.org. Look for entries under the term acetogenin and his name, McLaughlin, comma, JL. Copyright 2008, Richard Lund. All rights reserved.